Gupta from India. And imagine I'm, I'm here to talk about a subject, about an issue which has never been considered an issue. And the issue is called the issue of clothing. The logic is very simple. When you say, when you talk about three basic needs of people, you say food, cloth and shelter. But when you talk about working on the subjects, you ignore clothing. Clothing primarily is a subject of disasters. You look at the most prestigious websites of the development world, brochures of funding agencies, CSR brochures, you will find some 100, 150 issues from domestic violence to global warming, you will never find clothing written as a subject. My question, if earthquake is a disaster, if flood is a disaster, how come winters are not a disaster? Worldwide, do we document how many people die or suffer in winters just because people don't have clothes? In 1991, after doing my mass communication as a new journalist with a camera, I was roaming around on the roads of Old Delhi, which attracts a lot of migrated people from all over the country. Suddenly I see a rickshaw on which it is written in the native language, Delhi Police Kalash Honewala, which means a person who picks up dead bodies for Delhi Police. I was quite shocked. I said, what kind of profession is this? I followed this person, started covering him, wanted to do a story on him. Basically, this guy will be informed by local people on the unclaimed abandoned dead bodies. The administration does not want to get into the entire cycle of many, many things. They'll inform Habib. Habib Bhai will go and get 20 rupees, less than half a dollar and two meter of five cloth per dead body and bring the dead body. Two statements shook me, and this is way back in 91. The first came from him which said, in winters, my business, my work goes up, which means you have more deaths in winters due to lack of clothing. The second came from his daughter who was about six years old at that time. She's a grown up girl now, who said, when I feel cold, I hug the dead body and sleep. The dead body does not trouble me. It does not turn around. I was shocked. I was shocked because I only imagined that a few kilometers away from these people, people like us stay and wait for a disaster to happen to take off our old clothes. But don't you think that winters are maybe an annual disaster for so many people? The other issue, we said that every woman in the world needs a piece of cloth for five days during periods during menses. Have we ever thought in the regions where people do not have enough to cover themselves, from where and how do they bring that piece of cloth? And you can very well imagine it's a very taboo subject, even the most literate urban people do not want to talk about it. We wanted to open up the subject. We started roaming around in the villages. We found that women use the dirtiest piece of cloth because for them it's a synonym of dirt. Because for them it's a one-way process. If something bad is coming out, you absorb it, throw it away. They never understood it's a two-way process. A lot of infection and diseases go in. We found that women wash it, cannot dry it in the sunlight, with, wife, with moisture they wear it again. And we found cases where you have two to three women in the families, the cycles are different, they share the same piece of cloth. We found that women are forced to use ash, women are using sand, old jute, gunny bags, rags, and to our utter shock, we found that women are even forced to use polythens. We found cases where a lady used a piece of blouse which had a hook and she died of tetanus, or a case where 
a centipede entered through the body and the lady died. And my new friends, it's not about India. It's about half the world. The clothing has never been treated as a subject. We totally focus on clothing. We want it to become a subject. We want more and more people to work on it, not as a donation on charity. The Boone model, the organization of my, the, the model of my organization, actually used a tactic which is called cloth for work, where we go to the villages, involve communities, they take up the community development work, right from plantation to cleanliness, and then instead of money they are paid in clothes. So it literally works like a resource. I remember years back when we were trying to scale up and when people used to joke on us because they never understood the subject. We used to write to the funding agencies that we are scaling up and we need some money. Very standard reply used to come, which many of you must have heard. It says it does not fall in our parameter. Our argument was, if it's a fashionable subject, if it is a subject which is not radical, if it is a subject which people know, and you want to do something, maybe the funding agencies will give you $10,000 just to make jackets and caps. But when you talk about the basic issue of clothing, people do not want to come to you. That was a moment when we converted it into people's movement. We involved masses today after 10 years, when we started with 67 close, it has grown to about 20,000 kg a month, a force of 300 volunteers. We do not have any corporate support, any grant from funding agency. It's all about people who contribute. To me, 